Every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We'll turn around and greet someone. Tell them you're happy to hog in slot to see them. That'll be great on the end of the World Wide Web. Hallelujah. Yeah, I went to church today. It happened to hog in slop. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, uh, we said tonight that, you know, that, uh, I'm, this, is, this is my week for impromptu. Glory to God. Um, <laughs> I was talking to Ray Toucher. Uh, Friday night after church, you know, he, he saw where I posted. I was I had taught uh, the um, third year pastors class um, at Rama. That's a two hour class, by the way. It was a, it was a two hour class. So and and um, I said, yeah. I said I had all the thirteen hours notice. He said he said that wasn't planned out ahead of time. I said no, Ray. I said Dean Tad leaned up to me and reached, patted me on the shoulder during worship on Thursday night at the men's conference and said, how would you like to teach my class in the morning? And uh, I said, that was at 7.30. The class was at 8.30. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, we, we still had church to do. Then we had to go eat with Pastor Hagen in the uh, speaker lounge. Then I had to get back to the apartment, at least to say hey to the girls. You know. And then we had to sleep. Yeah. So I had a whopping 13 and a half hours notice with about 10 of it taken up. So praise the Lord. You know God's good. I said God is good. Now the next time they will give me some dates I'll have months. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. But you know sometimes it's good to be impromptu. You know the Bible says be instant in season and out of season. Can you say amen? amen. You got to be instant in season and out of season. You know, and so this morning I'm in, in my office and uh, looking over things for this, for this morning service. And the Lord said, I want you to start uh, having Sunday, the first Sunday night of the month be a communion and healing rally or healing service. I guess we could call it a healing rally. Amen. We're going to rally around the healing power of Jesus. Amen. And believe God for people to be made well, be made whole. And so, now this is, this, this is every first Sunday of every month. So that means, that means you need to start inviting sick folk. Yeah. It's going to be aimed, the purpose of that the service is going to be aimed at ministering to the sick. Right. Amen. Now, of course, around the, you know, on the communion table, um, you know, if the people aren't saved, you know, they, they don't have to partake. Um, but we want to minister to the sick. Amen. We're just doing, we're just obeying what God said. Now, if he tweaks this later, I will just follow his tweaking. Amen. You know, uh, when he told me back in August to take our Sunday night services and just pray on Sunday night, he said, he said, until I tell you different or indefinitely, um, that's what we were doing. Just doing. Hallelujah. And then he, and then he came along and said, now let's do this. Well, he didn't t say, well, what are you going to do on the other three? We're going to pray. Why? Because he didn't tell me what to do on the second, third, and fourth Sundays. The last, the, last I got, the last information I got on those was pray. The only one he told me to change was the first Sunday. So what are you going to do? I'm going to do what he said do. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, real, I'm a real stickler for that. You know, go back. You know, sometimes people get, get off and start doing stuff on their own. Just go back to the last thing he told you to do and do that. So he tells you to do something different. Don't let somebody else tell you to do something different. Amen? Well, you still take. Well, that's how so. If the Lord didn't tell you to do it, it won't work. <clears throat> we're going to have a real quick Bible lesson here. Then we'll, I mean, an uh, object lesson. Then we're going to get into this. Years ago, Dad Hagen told the guy, the story about the guy with the oil wells. Remember that? And this guy was a, was a um, you know, he had the oil wells and he, he was, he, they, they weren't really getting a lot done. And the Lord woke him up and said, yeah, I want you to go drill here. I want you to drill at a 45 degree angle. You know, strike oh, when he went out to his, his foreman. And told his foreman, said, we're going to drill over here and we're going to drill at a 45 degree angle. He said, now look. He said, put out all geological maps. said, there's no oil there. He said, I don't care. I'm paying you drill. And they argued. The guy argued with him, you know. Um, you know, probably thinking the boss has lost his head. But you know what? It doesn't matter. When it comes to the end, if he's the boss and you're getting paid, just drill. Drill, baby, drill. Well, he struck oil. So he comes back to him and says, now I want you to drill over here. The Lord told the guy where to drill next. Do the same thing, drill at a 45 degree angle. You know, guy, the guy put out all the geological maps. So there's no oil there. I probably thought he had a fluke over there. 
You ever been with some of the situations like that? You thought somebody, they just, that's absolutely got to be a fluke. There's no way in the world they could have got that right. There's no way it's really real. They just, they just lucked out. Same thing happened. Strikes off. After about three or four times and that finally the guy came to him and said, put the, he put all the geological maps away and says, what do you want to drill next? Hallelujah. Well, then see, somebody heard that testimony in the service and they had oil. They were oil company. He said, well, that's what I'm going to do. See, he started going out and saying, drill here and drill at 45 degree angle and he went bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Well, the Lord didn't tell him to do that. Amen. Well, God, God's not a respecter of persons. He may not be a respecter of persons. But he is a respecter of obedience the way he said do stuff. Amen. You can't use that scripture to mean you can get, ex- get it exactly what someone else did when the Lord told them specifically to do it a certain way and didn't tell you to do it that way. What, what is he a respecter of? He's a respecter of them hearing his voice and obeying that voice and doing what he said. That would have gotten the other guy wealthy too. If he had listened to the voice of God and done the way he said do it, he, would, you know, he may have been listen to your foreman and drill straight down. <laughs> He knows what he's talking about. Well, then that would be the, the, what the principle was, hearing the voice of God and obeying. That's what prospered the other guy. Not the method. So we, we try to copy people's methods. No, 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 no. The principle, the underlying principle is usually hearing what, what God said and then following that and doing it. Amen? All right. Well, I just lost part of my Bible. Hallelujah. And that's not because I tore it out. I wore it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn, if you will, uh, with me over to the uh, fifth chapter of the book of James. Praise God. James is right into the church. Glory to God. We'll see, we'll see the Lord's table here tonight. Praise God. Fifth chapter of the book of James. Let's just, we'll just pick up here. Uh, we'll just start James 1. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries you sh- that shall come upon you. Your riches, are, your riches are corrupt and your garments are, are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And you shall eat flesh as it were fire. Um, you have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which are reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You've lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. You've nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You've condemned and killed the just and he doth not resist you. And this is prophetic against people who are, who, who are evil, corrupt people and help people in the captivity. I mean, he's speaking prophetically there. Notice he said, but kept back by fraud. Not, not just, but by fraud. Now, what would be fraud? Well, I'm hiring you at $10 an hour. You work 40 hours, but you get paid 200 Well, I kept half of it back because I didn't like the way you did this. Or I didn't like, you know, that would be fraudulent. You know? I mean, you know, you work six months and then you get your pay and your pay is not what you agreed to. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to pay you. Well, you know, they've earned you the money. That's fraudulent. And so they, you know, they worked the fields, and been, but he had kept back by fraud. Amen. And those cries of the people being defrauded were, were entered into the Lord of Sabaoth. Hallelujah. And um, be patient, therefore. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Hallelujah. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now I'm going to tell you something. If 2,000 years ago the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, it draweth nigher. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's closer. Hallelujah. Grudge not against one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth by the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endured. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very merciful, pitiful and tender and of tender mercy. But of all these things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Oh. 
I think what Brother Hagin used to say, he said, they, they write a letter to the church today. He just go ahead and said, the 90% 90 of you or so that are sick, come on and just do this. Uh, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith, and the prayer of faith shall save our sozo in the Greek, sozo. And we know that the word sozo means more than to save. It also means to heal, to preserve, to deliver. Amen. And so, you know, and, and of course, it, it, this is the verb and it's comparative uh, Greek noun, solterius, salvation. Also means uh, health and wholeness. Amen. And so this, this word by context, amen, this word by context determines whether it's talking about healing or spiritual salvation to be saved. Hallelujah. And so it says here, um, and the prayer of, faith, uh, prayer of faith shall sozo or heal the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man of subject, uh, passion, a man subject like to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Then, if just you have a hard time adding that up, that's three and a half years. He prayed again, the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that if convicted, uh, converted the sinner from the error of his ways, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. What we're after here tonight, because we're talking, remember, to, so this is a healing rally. We're, talk, we're going to receive communion and pray for the sick. <clears throat> it's this part right here where he says, is there any sick among you? Now, if you listen to people teach on, on the subject of um, health and healing and, you know, and, and sickness and disease in the church, about, uh, about 90% of what you'll hear in the, in, the war, in, in the general body of Christ is God put that on you for a reason. There's some purpose that God has in making you sick. And whatever it is, you just don't know. That somehow you're going to figure it out along the way or die trying most folks usually die trying. They don't make it through the, why, well, they never figure out what it was the Lord was trying to teach them. Why? Well, number one, sickness doesn't teach you anything. Are you here? Now, we, we can get into some other things, um, but right now we're just going to talk about the fact that the church sees sickness as a teacher, whereas God sees it as a curse. So much so that sickness was laid on Jesus at the cross. You go read Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, uh, and, and that chapter, particularly down through 4, 5, 6, and that, that part of the chapter. Um, you read Matthew 8, 17. You read 1 Peter 2, 24. And you'll find out that at the same time that Jesus bore our sin, he bore our sicknesses. Sickness came on him at the same time our sin came on him. Sickness is a part of the curse. Sickness, if you read, and it's very easy, read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 61. Now, when you read verses 14, 1 through 14, everybody shouts. Blessed am I when I come into the city, and blessed am I when I go out into the field. I was blessed when I rise up, and I was blessed when I lie down. I'm blessed in everything I set my hand to. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. My cattle's blessed. My field's blessed. This is blessed. That's blessed. You get over there to 15 through 61, and if you don't do it, what God said to do, you're cursed in the city, and you're cursed in the field. Your cattle's cursed. Your oil's cursed. Your venues are cursed. And he just added a bunch of stuff, more stuff in there. And then he even got down here. Um, <clears throat> he got down there and finally just said, you know, that um, part of the curse is every disease named here, and even stuff's not even named yet. <clears throat> well, hallelujah, I'm glad I'm redeemed from the curse. Amen? But although we've been redeemed from the curse, there's still people walking in defeat in the arena of health and healing. And, and the Holy Ghost knew that as he moved on James to write this, that there will be people who would need some assistance to procure the blessings of God and, and the benefits of God and what was provided for them through Jesus Christ. And one of the things is, and since, since um, sickness affects the physical body, he instituted something called praying for the sick, anointing with oil. 
And you can pray for the sick with the anointing of oil. And the prayer of faith shall say, that's everything we do is by faith. You pray for the sick by faith. You anoint with oil by faith. Amen. It's just as much, it's just as much, you, get, you know, an act of faith to pray for the sick with oil as it is to, to reach out and have a an, uh, healing anointing and, and, and pre declare them heal, healed in Jesus' name. <clears throat> the anointing of oil is a, is a, is a doctrine and a um, practice of the church. Well, that's what they did in the Old Testament. Well, James said, do it in the New Amen. Now, a lot of times we don't we don't do that. Uh, we, you know, listen, we, we get into habits. We follow the, the, the ministry of someone else. We follow the example of someone else. You know, Dad Hagen, I, I, I don't know that I ever saw a minister with it. With a, no, I, I would bet you if you go back and study his ministry somewhere in the back in the past when he wasn't operating in a uh, healing anointing like he would in an evangelistic crusade, he anointed with oil. I, I would just about bet you on that. Can't guarantee it 100%. But when you're not operating in the healing anointing, the, you know, the oil, the, the, the church, the, 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 uh, James said, to anoint with oil. Now notice what he said there. He said, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Amen. People to come pray. They say, people in your church ought to be mature. The elders ought to be mature and doing the work of the ministry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, he did say they had to have a healing anointing. They could do anointing with oil and get the job done. And so they can anoint him with oil and get the job done. Amen. You don't have to, don't have to get the pastor ed. You don't have to get the, to, to the healing evangelist. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, elders in the church could come with oil and anoint and pray for them and get them healed. Well, three of you looking at me in a dog in a new pan and two of you like a cow in a new gate. What's the rest of you thinking? Hallelujah. Is there any sick among you? Now let me say this. Um, he didn't say, is there any sick among you? Well, just put up with it. You just weigh it out. You pray it out. You find out what God did that to you. So you can figure out what to correct in your life. Because the Lord has a reason you're sick. And he's trying to teach you something. So you just go ahead and put up with that until you get that thing straightened out. That's not what he said. He said, is there any sick among you? Call the elders of the church. Let them anoint him. Let them pray over him. And anointing him with oil. Oh, thank God. Thank God there's power in, there's, there's power in prayer. Amen. Amen. I say his power in prayer. Glory to God. He goes on down in verse 16. He says the effectual fervor prayer of righteous men availeth much. Thank God for it. Church, I'll tell you, you're, you've got more in you than you realize. You're more equipped than you understand. You're called of God to carry out his will in the earth. It's not the preacher. See, we are to what, what if you go back to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and study that. It says, wherefore, when he ascended up on high and gave uh, uh, and led captivity captives, he gave gifts unto men. Remember, I, well, let's just flip. Like, hold your place right here. Hold your place right there. Flick on, flip on, flick. Flip on over back over there to Ephesians 4 real quick. I know we covered this, but, you know, in, in this, where we are right now, it would be good just to kind of pull that out again. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What? Empowerment. And, you know, your gift, whatever you're gifted with, your power to do. That's not divine. That's not unmerited of favor. It's an empowerment. This grace. Every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everyone is given the empowerment to carry out whatever it is you have by the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, as we said before, nine and ten are a rabbit trail Paul took. Well, when, I, when he said that, I thought, he goes, you know what, I better explain this a little bit better about ascending. But it had nothing to do with the main thought. So when I read this, I leave it out, not to, to discount its validity in Scripture, because it's, it's very important. But for the thought he's trying to convey, we want to keep continuity. That was a rabbit trail. You know, now that he ascended, what is it? He descended first into the lower parts of the earth. That, that was an explanation or a clarification of something he said when he said he, when he ascended up on high. He wanted to clarify something, make sure there was no misunderstanding about what he was saying. <clears throat> but it's not the thought he was trying to convey here. His ascension and descension was not the main thrust. And so what we're going to do, because that's why it's in brackets. It was a side thought. Okay, so, so to keep the main course of the thought, he says, and he, uh, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captives, 
these captives and gave gifts unto men. Go down to verse um, 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the, now the word perfecting in the Greek is better translated in modern English, maturing. Understand maybe in 1611 King James it probably it, it could have meant maturing. It don't now. It means flawless. In the context of how we use that word now, we mean it flawless. If something is perfect, it's flawless. How many of you ever had a perfect ice cream sundae? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, make you hoop. Make a white band hoop. Yeah, hallelujah. Are y'all here? Y'all going home? Amen. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What for? For the maturing of the saints. What for? For the work of the ministry. The saints are mature for the work of the ministry. And see, that's the whole purpose in the ministry gifts is to mature, disciple, develop you for the work of the ministry. So when James called for the elders, it's a call for the elders of the church, he wasn't talking about the pastor. I believe he was talking about the, el the, the, the mature, developed leaders in the church. Call them out. Go on, you're equipped. You're anointed. You got the goods on the inside of you. You can go pray over them with a fervent, effectual prayer as a righteous man and lay hands on them with oil and get them healed. Praise God. We keep waiting for the pastor. To, you know, what, when you got 40 people, the pastor can get it all done. What do you got when you got 4,000? You can't get it all done when you got 4,000. Well, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We won't get to it if we don't develop you before we get to it. Amen. Did anybody get that? Amen. Did you get confused there? You're, we're not going. We're not going to get. We're not going to be able to go to the next level if we don't take the step up here at the level we are, Amen. and understand that you are equipped to lay hands on the sick and anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith and get the job done. That's right. You've heard enough sermons on healing. Yeah. Are you here? You've heard more sermons on healing than some whole nations have heard Amen. individually. In the whole nation. In your lifetime. You're equipped. Amen. So I'm just, I just want you to know. <clears throat> we don't need to run for these things. We need to be, we need to be ready to just move with God. Amen. So let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray. The elders pray. Over him. Anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. Well what's the name of the Lord? Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not in the name of you, you know, it's not in the name of some angel, I can tell you that. Yeah. Some guy had him a revival going on somewhere in this country, and all of a sudden he started invoking the name of an angel. <coughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Even when, even when Michael or fought over, battled over the bones of Moses. He durst not bring a railing accusation against Satan, but said, The Lord doth rebuke thee. Angels, you don't use the name of angels. You don't invoke the name of angels. That's, that's demonic. Yeah. In my name you'll cast out devils. In my name you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. In my name, Jesus said. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, I, I know people get in the habit sometimes, and, you know, I, I've, I've heard ministers do this, and, and, and I personally don't think it's the proper way. I don't believe that the name of Christ is the name you pray. And the Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And we can fall into the habit of doing things because the church does it or whatever. But the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank God for the name. I said, thank God for the name. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. Now, if you just have a problem with that, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to be specific. Are you here? So he says, is there any sick among you? That's, that's a valid question. Let him call. Now, who's supposed to call? It did not say, is there any sick among you? Let, let, let the leadership hunt them down. Now, I know, listen, a lot of things we teach on pastoring about caring for the flock and whatever. But quite frankly, the biblical example, now, listen, and, and we do. If we find somebody sick, we don't wait for them to call us. Okay. 
But biblically, you know, don't lay at home and go, oh, Pastor Ed didn't call me. I'm just upset. Well, according to James, you're supposed to call me and tell him. Are you here? You're going home. The Bible says for you to call. That's right. Well, that's not caring for the fly. I'm, listen, I'm not, we're not going to get into that right now. I'm saying, a lot of people sometimes, there's something happen in life. They don't, you know, they get sick or whatever. Somebody doesn't come visit them or whatever. And sometimes it's because nobody knew. Amen. I've had people, you know, call me. I'm saying, well, Pastor Ed, you know, I was, I was sick all week. Why didn't you call me? I didn't know. Amen. You know, you could have at least notified us. Well, I thought you a man of the Spirit. <laughs> Jesus, help us, Lord. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Now, James said, if you're sick, call. Send for summon. Call the elders of the church. And what are they going to do? If you're sick and you call, they'll come. But some people like to delight in their misery. Some folk like to delight in the fact that they got, a, they got the rheumatoid or they got the arthritis or they got an ailment Amen. and want to have some reason to complain and whine. Well, well, stop your whining. Do what the Bible says. Let's get the Bible results. Amen. Amen. So is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, who the sick one that's among us. Amen. Let me say this. It's a, it's a lot easier for who's coming to pray for you to be in faith when they know you are calling and summoning them to come pray for you in faith than it is to show up cold and try to figure out what you want. Do you want to visit? Hello? Do you want to be able to complain about what you got so you can get some, you know, some sympathy? I mean, listen. I've had people say, Pastor, I need you to come pray for me. I've had them call and say, you don't even need to come down here. Just pray for me right on the phone. That'll get the job done. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't, have, you don't have to come down here. You just pray. I'll get it. Amen. 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 Then, then to find out somebody sitting, you call them up and say, well, can I come see you? Well, yeah. You got to go pray for them. You're trying to pray for them. And, and they ain't no more interested in getting healed. They're more interested in being able to whine about what they got. Amen. So they can call everybody in the church and tell them they're sick. Well, see, well, what's going to happen there? You're going to undermine faith. When somebody wants something bad enough, they'll, they'll search it out. Um, now, since everybody here is, here is normally here, we, we haven't brought in the crowd yet. Where they're coming? Because it's going to be healing rallies. We're going to start learning about that. But... I had a lady came to church one time and she was already well advanced in cancer. Minister to her, talk to her, share with her, put materials in her hands, tell her husband, play the tapes. I mean, it, it, it hurts her to hear the sound of those, those tapes. Play them low. Her spirit will hear it. Get it into her. Read these books to her. Go visit her regularly. At least weekly. You know, at least weekly. Go visit her. We go, you know, and there's somebody in the church that I would take them when we go visit her. Now, have you read your book? No, I haven't read. But the TV just got turned off. You can still, you can still almost hear the, the, the radiation static on it. You showed up, it took them a minute for them to get everything turned off and set up so it looked good when you walked in the room. The television room. Books are sitting there. We get right there last week. The last set of books you gave them sitting right there hadn't been used. Just sitting there. Never opened. Not read. Are you here? She died. See, some people tell you they want to be healed. But they won't do anything about getting it. They won't participate with getting healed. Are you here? They'll sit back and, and resist. And you're trying to get it to them, but they won't do what they need to do. Amen. And that's a difficult place because, you know, it's bad when you want it for them more than they want it. Amen. That's tough. 
Because you're thinking, man, I know God, what God wants to do. I know God wants to get this to you. I know Jesus carried this for you. <coughs> but some people just don't want to be bothered. Now, I don't know. I don't remember who this was. But one time somebody asked me to go visit you know, somebody in the hospital. And I went. And man, they about broke their neck trying to watch as the world turns around me. I mean, you're trying to talk to them, pray for them, trying to, you know, get them to a place you can pray for them. And, and, and every time you'd move, they'd move their neck so they could see the TV behind you. Hello. You're thinking, what am I doing here? They ain't no more interested in me being there. And they're not even being courteous about me being there. I interrupt their soap opera. Because they're about to tell who Henry's been sleeping with the past six weeks. And you can't miss that because there are no reruns on soap operas. You either get it or you don't. As the stomach churns and the old and the relentless. Hello? Y'all here? On the edge of insanity? I remember all the, uh, and then he, remember, how many remember the vampire soap opera? Dark Shadows, yes. <laughs> they finally got him where he could come out in the sunlight before the series ended. Yeah. Yeah, prayer, there to help minister to somebody. You're up in the hospital, you need healing. I've come up here, brought my assistant up here. We're going to try to minister to you. And you got, you got the, I mean, you, 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 ju you juke it and jive it in the bed trying to watch that TV. See, when, see, when somebody calls you up and says, you know what, Pastor? I, I, I'm fighting something and I need prayer. And I, you know what? I'll guarantee you when, you when the elders show up or a pastor shows up or whoever, they, they're not going to be looking for the, the television. They're calling. I need for you to get over here. I need prayer. Amen. I need a miracle. I, I'm, I'm dealing with something. I've got to have help from heaven. Amen. Praise God. That's right. I said, praise God. Amen. Amen. So he says, let them call for the elders of the church. Now, folks, some folks, they get sick and they expect the pastor to read their mind and to know that they're sick and to show up. The man of God. Light floods the room as he enters into the hall hallways of the house. Because he carries that anointing in such a deep... Now, listen, understand, I am not trying to uh, advocate the responsibility of ministering to the congregation. What I'm trying to say is, if we can get people to understand that setting an atmosphere of faith by their desire and their actions makes getting answers easier. Amen. Said amen. Well, I didn't want to bother you. It's not a bother to minister life. Amen. And sometimes that's an excuse. I didn't want to bother you. You're not bothering me. You're sick. You need prayer. Glory to God. <laughs> sick them to a dog. We'll pray for you. We'll get it. We'll go buy a whole bottle of extra virgin olive oil and bring it. One of the big ones. We'll dump it on your head and saturate everything. Amen. We'll soak you up down one side, down the other. That's why they used to do it in the Bible now. This little dab of do you stuff we do. The little cross on the forehead. You know. I don't do that. I just, I just, you know, we put the oil on the head. I don't. Some spirits about making a cross on the forehead out of oil. No, there's not. It's not in the symbol. It's in the oil. Amen. And that, and, and that oil represents the Holy Ghost coming on them. Hallelujah. Bringing the healing anointing of Jesus. It's a physical thing. To, to, to revel, give them revelation that, that there's an anointing to heal them. Not the little cross. Oh, we're going to get real fancy. We'll start showing little signs of the fish on the forehead. <laughs> it's not oil art. It's laying hands on the sick to get them healed. So, it says, let them pray over them, anointing them, him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, we do know this, that the oil doesn't heal. It's the name of Jesus. Amen. That oil is a place for them to release their faith. And some people need more of a release point than others. Now, listen, I know you can get squirrely with this, and people did, and people do. 
But Oral Roberts learned the secret of a point of contact back in the 50s with television. And he'd stretch his hand out and he said, now you come lay your hands on the television and put it on my hand. Well, they weren't physically touching. And it wasn't a gimmick. It was if you could get people to release their faith at a point. If there was a place you could get them to release their faith, they'd get answers. And so by going to television, put their hand on where his hand was on that television screen, it was a point of contact, it was a point of releasing their faith. It had nothing to do with the television screen being anointed. Now, I know people send out gimmick stuff, you know, here's a pack of salt, throw it over your shoulder, turn around three times, send us an offer of $10, and you'll get what you want from God. I've seen that. That's not something I just made up. I actually got one of those in the mail. I didn't throw it over my shoulder. I didn't turn around once, and I didn't send them any money. Yeah. <laughs> put, it, put it on the hamburger. That's right. I didn't want to put it on my hamburger. I didn't know what was in it. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> it might be, it might be uh, anointed salt. It might be de devil salt. The devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Roberts learned how to get people to release their faith. And see, when you call for the elders of the church and they come in, they pray over you, and they anoint with you all, and in the name of the Lord, what they're doing? They're bringing you to the point of releasing your faith. To get the job done. Praise God. Amen. 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 And uh, then it says in the prayer of faith shall say or heal the sick. So faith involved. It said the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Right. And the Lord shall raise them up. Amen. Oh praise God. Didn't say he'd leave them there. He said he'll raise them up. And listen I love it. And if he's committed sins they'll be forgiven him. I'm saying the Lord's just going to wash, wash him with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Cleanse him of all that stuff. Praise God for God's forgiving mercies. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So here we have an ordinance of the church laid out by James that praying for the sick and anointing with oil will heal the sick. Heal the sick. Everybody say, heal the sick. So healing becomes an ordinance of the church. Now, if you listen to some people today, sickness is the ordinance of the church. God's just making everybody sick. Everybody times, every time somebody gets sick, you know, I, I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe the Lord has a purpose. I believe God knows what he's doing. Well, listen, you take those statements in the right context and they're true. God knows what he's doing. Are you here? Things do happen for a reason. It doesn't mean it was, pre was preordained or planned of God. Amen. If you go out here on Interstate uh, 85 out here and drive 150 miles an hour and hit a pothole and flip your car and crash into a wall barrier and it blows up and catches on fire and kills you and whoever's riding with you, it happened for a reason. What? You're an idiot. Yeah. It had nothing that God didn't press your accelerator. God didn't anoint you to be dumb. Are you here? God didn't make you go out there and drive like an idiot. He didn't make your car hit that pothole. Are you, are, if you believe that everything is planned to God and God had everything for a reason, then there was a reason you were an idiot. Or crashed into a family and killed a whole family of seven. Their babies and everything. Oh, and everybody gets to go, oh, we don't know why the Lord does what he does. With seven caskets up here. An idiot over there at some other church being buried. I'll tell you the reason for it. The guy was an idiot. No, he's not full. He's an idiot. Just an idiot. You don't drive 150 miles an hour in a car on a road that's not designed for those tight road speeds. It's, it's stupid. But people will go talk and blame God for it. No. The reason for it was he's an idiot. Okay? Everything happens for a reason. Well, yeah, but it doesn't mean, but the inference is, when, when Christians say it, the inference is it happened because God planned it to be that way. <laughs> Karen, you understand, I'm, just met, I'm, I'm trying to make my point. It's not just foolish, he's an idiot. Amen. He might be driving 75 and a 65, and he's being foolish. <laughs> okay? Driving 150 and a 65, he's an idiot. So I came on business 85, and I'm doing, and I'm actually speeding a little bit because we're a little bit later than I wanted to be. I'm doing 65 and a 55, and some guy comes by me on a motorcycle doing at least 90. At least 90. Well, as long as he don't hit something in the road or some, some at night. 
There could be something road you don't see, uh, uh, something fell off a truck or whatever. You hit that at 90 on a motorcycle. We'll just get out the mop and the dustpan. Because you're going to be serious trouble. Hell up. Y'all hear y'all going home. He was an idiot. Oh, but it felt good. Well, the road was not set up for you to do that, especially at night when you can't see it so far down the road. What if a car, or what if a car comes on the ramp and doesn't see you because you're driving, you know, you, they catch a blind spot and they just move right over your lane at 90. You'll be the hood ornament. Your head will be sticking through the gravel, going down the road, catching bugs. So, the inference that everything happens because God planned it is erroneous. Things happen for a reason. Amen. A lot of times people get, get, uh, get uh, go out and eat and they come home and they don't feel good. Well, you know, three Big Macs, two orders of French fries, four Cokes, and a frappe. <clears throat> the Lord didn't make you sick. He didn't make you be a glutton. All right, so. <clears throat> Amen. 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 So God doesn't, God's not making you sick. God's not putting the sickness on you to, you know, to, so you can learn some lesson that you never, I, I've yet to have somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I spent six months sick with leukemia and, um, and, 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 and the day that I learned my lesson, I was healed. I never heard anybody say that. Hello? And, and, and then people come along and say, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know why the Lord did this to me, but I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I, I know he's got a reason. And the whole time he's got a reason for making them sick, they run into every doctor they can find to get rid of what the Lord put on them. And if they don't like what this doctor says, they go to a different try to find out what he, how he can get rid of what the Lord put on them. And I say this all the time. If you really believe the Lord put something on you, you ought to ask, forget going to the doctors and go to your prayer closet and ask for a double portion. Get all you can get because I'm telling you, if, if cancer or leukemia or AIDS or any other kind of disease will make you a better Christian, you need all of it you can get so you can be the best Christian you can be. You know, that's sarcastic and rhetorical. Of course it is. Because when you analyze it in the light of the Bible, in the light of, of foolish thinking you understand that uh, believing that God put something on you to teach you a lesson and people never get a, I just I just never met anybody that got the lesson learned they spend their whole time trying to get rid of whatever's supposed to be teaching them a lesson amen, amen. it's like you being a, a, a put somebody was, I want to learn how to play the uh, guitar and we go out and hire a guitar teacher and the guitar teacher shows up you throw them out the window Amen. Get rid of it. I don't want that guitar teacher. Well, don't you want to learn? See, Christians are, are really don't, they don't tell the truth. Because see, when they get sick and somebody says, well, the Lord's trying to teach me something. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, I trust the Lord through this and learn the lesson he's trying to teach me. And they're trying to get rid of it. They're not telling the truth. They don't want it. But they're trying to appease their conscience. And because somebody told them that, it makes them feel better. But see, those, those kind of thinkings and those kind of lines of thought undermine your faith. Because how can you believe God to take off of you what you believe to, or, or you've been told or try to convince yourself he put on you to teach you something? You can't get rid of it until you learn where it came from. And once you learn where it came from, then you can get rid of it. My dad um, was, was a supervisor machinist at Burr's Welcome. Now, y'all remember Burr's Welcome. They're out of business. They were bought out by Glaxo uh, about 15, 20 years ago. And, uh, but they used to, they made uh, Sudafed, they made Neosporin. Those are their, those are their um, leading products, Neosporin, uh, Sudafed, Actifed, uh, Neosporin. They had a bunch of pharma, uh, pharmaceutical drugs and uh, Neosporin. We still use Neosporin, all those under a different company's name. Burroughs Welcome is the company that developed it. Well, that plant they had down in Greenville, the manufacturing plant in Greenville, operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, just wide open. They get roof leaks, a flat roof. They get roof leaks. Well, it'd be leaking over here. And they'd go up on the roof. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't find a leak. Finally, somebody got smart, and they bought infrared film. And they took a 35-millimeter camera, and they went up after rain when the sun came out and took a picture of the roof. And the infrared film picked up the heat from the water that was under the roof 
running and they could find any leak they needed to find. Because it might be a pinhole over there that ran over here and leaked. They could not deal with the leak until they knew where it was coming from. Amen? You can't deal with sickness until you know where it comes from. Amen. And Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Now, I've come that they might have life, zoe, life in the absolute sense, life in the man that God has it, and have it in abundance, or have it to the full. Amen. It's hard for you to pray about sickness if you believe God put it on you. It's hard for you to deal with it if you believe God put it on you. So what do you do? You find out where it came from. Now apparently, James said, if you're sick, call for the elders of the church. They're going to pray and get it off of you. Well, they're not going to pray. We're not going to pray against the will of God. Hello? So we're not going to pray against the will of God. He said, actually God said, if you'll pray for him, he'll, the Lord will raise him up. Yeah. That's right. And as a bonus, if he's committed sin, they'll be forgiven. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so, he said, pray for the sick. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise them up. Commit his sins, they be forgiven him. Glory to God. So, understand this. Praying for the sick with the anointing of oil is the ordinance of the church. Not like what Dad Hagen used to say. He'd say, now, one way God heals, not the only way, but one way he heals is by the laying on of hands. See, another way he heals is by the anointing of oil. Are you here? Another way, you can believe God for yourself. Pray and believe and receive this for yourself. Amen? Praise God. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do what we said we're going to do. Is any sick among us, we're going we're to pray for you. We're going to anoint you with oil. Hallelujah. Now, we have this cute little olive oil from, from Israel with frankincense in it. Hallelujah. Special oil. No, it's not. It's the prayer of faith. Amen. But we're going, we're going to do exactly. So if anybody here tonight needs, needs prayer for sickness, you're dealing with anything, come on up. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Ushers. Do we have ushers? Where are you? All right. Glory to God. Anybody else? Huh? Rest of you, come on. Uh, praise God. Anybody else? The rest of you stand up. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out to them. Stand in agreement with us. Amen. The, 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 the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. They'll be made whole in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the healing anointing. Thank you for, for the release of faith. Thank you that you work in their bodies and make them whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In accordance with James chapter 5, we lay hands on them with the anointing of oil and command them to be made whole in the name of Jesus. We call Carrie healed and whole in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, we pray over Lord. We say that he is the healed of the Lord. Thank you that the, the, the anointing of oil, the prayer of faith. We declare him healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Debbie, we can speak health and healing over her body and command with the ordinance of God. We say that it's so and the Lord, Lord raises her up and all these up in the name of Jesus and they're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, amen. Now listen, before you go your way, what do we read tonight? We'll lay hands on the sick. The prayer, we'll pray. We'll lay hands on you, anointing you with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save or heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise you up. Hallelujah. So what's your, what's your testimony? And I was prayed for. Oil was laid on. I was anointed with oil. The Lord raises me up. Hallelujah. I'm healed. The Lord heals me because he heals the sick. And he raises me up. Praise God. That's your testimony. Amen. Said amen. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, lift your hands and thank God for the answer. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Call it done. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Praise God. Now, before we receive communion, we didn't receive the offering tonight, did we? All right. Let's, let's take up, let's take up, let's receive tonight's offering. Now we're just now we're, listen, we're going to get to the point where we got us those little kiosky things or those little little uh, things where you can dial in your your iPhone and send your offering in. 
Hallelujah. And we'll get there. Amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. You need an offering envelope there on the seat backs in front of you. Praise God. We're gonna now listen, as soon as we finish this, I need for y'all to go get the youth and bring them over. Because we're gonna we're gonna receive communion. Hallelujah. Once we receive the offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we call the people blessed as they give offerings and tithe the tithe. We thank you that heaven, heaven blesses them. We thank you that the, the blessings of God overtake them. And they walk in all the fullness of the plan of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead, ushers, receive that into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say Shundai. Hallelujah. Amen.